as I said, I think last week, y'all had to forgive me. I may have to ease my leg and sit down. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> this morning, uh, I want to kind of remind us, if you haven't already uh, looked, at your, looked at your notes, but surely y'all have heard of that popular idiom that says mind over matter. You know, uh, and Webster describes it as being uh, used to describe a situation in which someone is able to control a physical condition, problem, etc., by using the mind. Uh, well, that sounds a little bit like a uh, some kind of mystical stuff. You know, you got the power to just think about it, and it and it becomes becomes so. Um, but but looking at that. When we use that description all the time, mind over matter, people, that's very popular for people to say that. Um, but what is our mind, if you think about that, what is that? Is that just your brain? You know, uh, what is it? Uh, and I put here in your notes that it's our ability to think, to feel, reason, uh, using your brains and just your consciousness. You know, it's, that's encompassing what your mind is. And, and we get energy uh, from our mind. We, we sing songs today that talk about peace and, and joy and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, and that's what uh, some would determine uh, it to be called some emotional energy. Um, and I, I got a definition that I found. Emotional energy is a feeling sensation and physiological reaction that drives emotions, including motivation, passion, and enthusiasm. It can range from positive emotions like confidence and good self feelings to negative emotions like depression and the lack of initiative. All right. So thinking about this in your mind and you know, whether you get energy uh, from uh, your emotions, I, I believe that most people would agree that there is a big link uh, between how you are in your mind and your emotions and all of that uh, and then how that translates into your physical uh, abilities. Uh, to do things. Uh, and that's why this morning we're going to look at what the Bible says uh, about how joy uh, equals strength, okay? Um, in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, uh, Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your what? Strength. What is joy? Okay, uh, it's happiness, huh? Okay, that's a perfect joy, I would say. But, but joy just in and of itself is, is to be happy, to be glad, right? Uh, if you take a look at what's taking place here uh, in the context, the Israelites have just been allowed to come back to Jerusalem. They are rebuilding the wall, have, excuse me, have just rebuilt uh, the wall of Jerusalem. So they have worked on their physical fortifications uh, around the city. It wasn't as tall, wasn't as thick, it wasn't as grand uh, of a wall that was once there, but it was good enough to help protect the, the city at this point. And what they're doing now, the spiritual leaders through Ezra, uh, was trying to work on the people's uh, spiritual fortifications and their spiritual foundations. Uh, and they began to teach the law. It, it, it says earlier, uh, in Nehemiah, that Ezra took the book of the law, he opened it up, and the people stood up and they worshiped God. Some people, uh, despite having a pinched nerve or not, won't stand up to praise God for any type of thing. Much less people see, that's why I sat for most of that, because you get to sit now, and then I had to stand the whole time. Uh, but most people uh, would never get up and praise God from a reading of the law. They may do some for certain scriptures uh, throughout the Bible that talk about things that, that, that they like, maybe New Testament scriptures. But Ezra was reading what they had was the book of the law, and the people stood and they worshiped. Well, as they heard what Ezra was reading uh, through the law, and they listened to God's word, they began to be convicted of the sins that they had committed. They began to weep and cry. Uh, before the Lord as they, as they began to see uh, that error uh, in their ways. And in verse 10, what Nehemiah is doing here, uh, he is, is, is trying to encourage the people that they shouldn't be grieving. They should be rejoicing 
because God has, has forgiven them of their sins. God is working in their lives, uh, and he is there uh, to provide them uh, some strength. Uh, they, they should have been sorrowful for their sins, but God wasn't destroying them. You know, that, that would be really bad if you realize, uh-oh, I'm, I've been sinning and God's fixing to wipe me off the, fa- the, place of the, uh, the, the, the face of the planet. That's not what it was happening. He was restoring them. God was doing some good things, and they didn't need to grieve. They needed to lift their head uh, up high. But if you take a look closely at what Nehemiah says, now he just doesn't say to just have joy, right? There's qualifiers to it. It says to have joy of what? of the Lord. And it says that it is your strength. And if you look at, well, what, what does that mean to have joy of the Lord as our strength? And this is where I said earlier, what we asked, what is joy? Uh, it, is, it is gladness, pleasure, happiness. It's a positive emotion of your mind, right? It's an attitude that you have. It's a way of thinking. That's where joy is at, right? It's a feeling, right? Yeah, yeah. Anybody disagree? Okay, uh, it's a feeling. It's a state of. It's a state of mind. Um, now you can get that. You can get joy from all kinds of sources. You can get joy from uh, whatever pleasure hobby that you have uh, out. You, you know, sometimes people get joy from working. Sometimes people get joy from sitting down. Sometimes people get joy from uh, 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 different types of activities uh, that you would do. Uh, you get joy from friends and family members and all that. It's not talking about any of that kind of stuff. Not, none of this worldly, materialistic kind of joy. If, if you have a particular person, maybe it's your spouse, and you say, well, I get lots of joy from being around my spouse or my best friend or whatever. Uh, people will fail you, okay? Uh, things of this world uh, fade away. Uh, but this is joy from the Lord and joy of uh, the Lord. And, and that joy, it, it says, produces strength in us. And the Hebrew this word that's translated for us in the English as strength, that literally means a fortified place. A fortified, protective place of, of refuge. It's strong, all right? Uh, and so this joy of the Lord is your strength. And I just wonder, like, what, how does that produce strength in us? How does a, a attitude uh, that we have in our mind produce some kind of strength? And if you take a look at Proverbs 17, verse 22, and I have this in the New American Standard Version, it says, a joyful heart is what? Good medicine but a broken spirit dries up the bones. I want to explore that a minute. How is a joyful heart good medicine? Well, we know our emotions impact our health. Like stress, we We know that? Scientists know that? It's killing me. per my blood pressure results the past couple of weeks. Uh, uh, so Amanda said that we know that your emotions impact you. I, I alluded to that earlier. But, but how is a joyful heart good medicine? I mean, you stated that as a fact. I, I, I put Brooke through this ringer yesterday. I know what it gives you. What's that got to do with it fixing any problems, though? Hmm. But, but I find it odd that whenever people are going through something, and you, whenever we're going through something, and you say to that person, well, it's all in your head. They don't like that. But it is the answer, though. We, no, no, we don't like it. But all we've been talking about stuff is head stuff. Your mind. How, so let me put it to you this way. How much of things that we go through is our mind? What percentage would you, would you imagine? Anybody in here in the 20s? I'm not saying in your 20s. <laughs> in the 20 percentile? It's very, very high, isn't it? 
But yet when you say to somebody, listen, you got to, I mean, I'm not saying to be derogatory and to say all that is just in your head. But when you're trying to say, listen, I'm going through a problem, and you say, it's a battle of the mind. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear that it's somebody else's problem, that it's some other external fix that you're going to have. Folks, that isn't the way we operate. The vast majority of the things that we have going on, and I, I'm not saying that, and I don't think this is saying, that, it's going to, that if I just get joyful, it's going to fix my pinched nerve. It's going to fix your high blood pressure. It may fix your high blood pressure, okay? Uh, that it's going to fix an amputee's leg or something like that. But how you go through something, how you, or whether you're able to persevere or not, or whether, as it says, but a broken spirit dries up the bones, a broken spirit kills you. So how do you keep going? How do you persevere you know, through whatever it is that you may be going through? You do that when you have a joy of the Lord. Uh, joy gives us tremendous strength, whereas sadness saps you of your energy. It saps you of your will to go any longer. You know, um, in Romans chapter, of, uh, excuse me, I'm not going to go there yet. When I talked about earlier uh, about emotional energy, um, you think about coaches, all right? And a, and a coach, especially, let's say it's a football context, you, know, you go to the locker room, and in, in the beginning, before the game, that coach is going to give a pep talk, isn't he? All right? You, you come back from halftime, yeah, not always a pep talk there that is going to end with a pep talk. Some of it's going to be, you don't do that no more, do, 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 and then you give a pep talk. But they give motivational speeches to people in sports. Why? To encourage them? So you're saying that their minds, I, shouldn't they stop worrying about all of this, you know, uh, encouraging words and all of that stuff and just make them get on the weights and train better and run faster and catch better and throw better and all that? Shouldn't they focus on all of that and not all of this pumping up of the mind junk? Think about a marathon runner. And I've watched the Olympics quite a bit, uh, laid up in the bed, and I'm watching the Olympics. When you're running a marathon, and what do they tell you? It's mainly mental. I've seen some runners out there, and they've given up. Sometimes, yeah, something tears loose, and you know that, you got to stop. But mainly, it's your mind telling you, I can do it. I can go just a, just a little bit longer. And you have people that are cheering you along, you know, going out there on the back. And I'm telling you, when you are in involved in something like that and hearing those cheers, hearing those people that say those things, it helps you run a lot longer than your body ever was going to give you to be able to do it. So it seems like we all agree that it is your mind. Then why do we fight against that so much then? Why do we fight against it? That's the solution. It, it, we, have, we have a lot of answers to a lot of the things that we go through right in our own selves already. We have to resolve just to do it. You have to resolve that, listen, I'm going to fight towards that, towards that end. Uh, a person that's pepped up is going to accomplish more than a person who is down. Um, and that's the same for somebody who's suffering from a physical ailment. Our bodies absolutely respond to a positive mindset. I have seen people time and time again in the hospitals. I, I'll use Virginia, for instance. Virginia's in her 90s. She broke her hip. For most people within 20 years of her age, that could have been a death sentence. Yet in three weeks' time, she's walking. Don't you know that it was because Virginia has a mindset in a, in a, of, hey, I can do this. They're not going to get me down. I'm, you know, they're not going to count me out just because uh, I've had nine decades on this, on this planet. You know? I have seen a many of people uh, less, uh, uh, in a lesser uh, uh, age bracket than she is that, it, that they hardly could recover from that. It's, it is a lot of your mind. But I've seen people in the hospital and they give up. I just don't have the will to go on anymore. And they go down. Yes, ma'am. I had too much to do to give up. <laughs> she, she had too much to do. Yes, ma'am, you do. Yes, ma'am, you do. Um, but when in, in Romans chapter 15 and verse 13, listen at what Paul is, is praying here. He says, May the God of hope fill you with all what? Joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of 
of the Holy Spirit. All right, that's what Paul, Paul could have prayed anything, could have asked for anything uh, for the people at Rome. He's praying for God to give them a good mindset. In Philippians uh, chapter 2, I read a piece of this last week uh, before we took communion. It says, have the same mindset of Christ Jesus, the same attitude as Christ Jesus, who being very nature God did not consider equality with him something to be grasped, but gave, made himself nothing, taking the form of a, uh, of a human, being made in human likeness. It says all of that, but it says, have the same attitude, that same attitude that Jesus had while he was there to be able uh, uh, to go on. So this joy, uh, as, as I said, is, is something that seems to be very, very important. It produces this, some kind of strength uh, within us when we, ha when we have it. So, you know, um, <clears throat> When we look around the world today, it's often hard to find something to be joyous about, isn't it? Something that's going to make you happy, glad. I mean, you turn on the, the news or you turn on TV shows or whatever. Happiness and joy doesn't seem to sell, does it? It's tragedy that sells. It's bad things that happen uh, that, that people seem to, to be more in tune to. And that's exactly what Satan wants to accomplish. Exactly what he wants to accomplish. He wants to be able to attack the mind. That's one of the, his, his biggest plans. Uh, and, he's, and he's doing a good job of doing that. Stealing people's joy. You know, Tucker and them said earlier that uh, joy should be something that you have in the definition he gave of it. It's something that you have despite the circumstances that you're in. Well, how often do you find that your joy gets stolen from you? in some way, shape, or form. There's always something out there to be down and depressed about and, out and not have joy. I'm telling you, every one of us has that. You've got something that you can look at, either something that happened way back in the past, something that's happening right now. You can, you can say, ah, you just don't know what I'm going through. Well, I can tell you right now, I can bring somebody to stand before you to tell you of their own story, and it is four times what you're going through, yet they still some, somehow have a smile on their face. There's always somebody who's going through something more. And I look at those people sometimes, and I go, well, how, how are they doing that, though? How did they go through and, 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 and push through that? And it's generally because they have a mindset. Maybe it's not always a Christian mindset, but they have a mindset and they have willed that even through this, I'm going to do it. And I can give you a personal example. It hurts to stand here. It hurts to come to church. It hurts for me to walk. I just can't think to not be here. If I had to, I'll come in here in a scooter. I can hurt at home. If I'm at home, if I walk around, it hurts there. Why not hurt here? I have just, and, and, and I'm not telling you, when it comes to church attendance, I am legalistic about it. And I'm not saying that's a good, a good thing, okay? I, it's okay for you to miss church and, and stuff like that. So you, you, you may not go to hell, you know. Um, I can't say you won't, so I'm just saying you may not. I don't know. Uh, and I can tell you that coming to church doesn't mean you will go to heaven. Okay, so let me say the other side of it. It's been one of those things, folks, that like church and being in church and church attendance has nothing to me to do uh, with the content of which I'm getting. It has to do with the support structure uh, to which I'm a part of. And I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the physical interactions of people in church. And it's a place I want to be. It's a place that I'm going to be come hell or high water. And I say that not as a cuss word because Satan does everything he can to bring the full forces of hell against you to get you down. And if I stay at home and I stay away from God's people, well, absolutely, I'm going to have nothing but a, a bunch of things out there that's going to steal my joy. I can tell you that. Sometimes you come to church and people steal your joy. Woo! But... I try my chances in church before I do outside. People say to me, I don't like organized religion. What you want, disorganized religion? That sounds pretty stupid to me. Yeah, you're going to come to church, you're going to find people. And you're going to find people talking about each other. Take every opportunity they can to tear somebody down. You know, stabbing folks in the back. Because guess what, we're a bunch of humans in here in a fallen state. We don't always walk around and give the perfect example about how to do everything, no. 
But I can tell you that I find more joy in church than I do at Walmart. I find more joy in, in people that, are, that I want to be around than I do if I go to any other place that I, that I can think of because there's humans out there and humans in here. But mostly the humans in here are trying to do a little bit better and we got something we're trying to strive for, okay? Uh, and, and, and so, yeah, what I'm saying is, yeah, I, because my big toe hurts or because I've got this or that, I can say, well, I, you know, let me just lay out. Well, I, well how long am I going to stay out of church? for this pinched nerve to finally heal weeks and months. That's not going to happen. I don't care whether I was the pastor or not. It's, it's just not going to happen. Okay. And, and I'm telling you, I find a way to do something, not look for the reasons why not to do it. Okay. And that's the thing in life. Where, and I'm putting church attendance, but just getting up out of the bed. You got tons of reasons just to keep laying there. But you got to find that reason to get up and that reason to go. And I can tell you, if you have the joy of the Lord, it's hard to steal that from you. All right, it's hard to steal that from you. Uh, so how do you get that joy of the Lord, though? It's, it's talked to us about uh, in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and uh, 23, and Jim read this a couple of weeks ago about the fruit of the Spirit, but uh, it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, what? Joy. The fruits of the Spirit, folks, are not actions. What are they? They're apples and oranges. No, they're not results. What are they? Starts with an A. They're not actions. Maybe that starts with an A. They're attitudes. Aren't these attitudes? Love. It's a state of mind. Did you know? Joy. Peace. Forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Aren't those, aren't those attitudes and mindsets? The, the other things earlier on in there were talking about bad things that you would do. Don't, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, and don't do that. He didn't, he didn't say, hey, go follow the Spirit, and the fruit of the Spirit is that you're going to do this good action no, it's an attitude, because guess what? If you have those attitudes, then the actions that flow from that are going to be good ones, all right? So one of the fruits of the Spirit is joy. That's what the Spirit will give you. So when you say, well, how do I get that kind of joy? How do I get that kind of positive outlook that's going to make me stronger? Well, it's simple. It's very simple, but it's one of the most difficult things to do. Something can be easy but still be difficult to accomplish, all right? Uh, and, and the joy of the Lord comes when you surrender everything to him. That means your thoughts, your emotions, your body, your actions. You surrender everything to God. And, 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 you, and when you, you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and we've talked about this a lot over the past couple of weeks, when you are saved, you have the Holy Spirit that is living inside of you, but you got you to gotta relinquish some space. You got to quit being so full of yourself and full of what you want to do and, and, and the way you think things are supposed to go and all, looking around at all the problems and all that stuff and you just got to empty yourself of everything, all of your desires, all of your plans and all of that stuff and you say, Holy Spirit, fill me. And when the Holy Spirit is filling you up, because see, the way I give the analogy, the Holy Spirit right now is pouring into everybody in here that's a born again saved Christian. He's pouring into you constantly. That, that picture is of the Holy Spirit, if you want to look at it this way, He's constantly pouring on you. But if you're full, if you're full of yourself, what happens? There's no room and it just runs off and it goes over and gets on somebody else. But if you empty yourself and you say, well, I'm about right here. Well, he's got about half room to fill you and he will. All right. And, he work, and you're working at half strength. All right. You want, you want 75%? Keep on going. You want 100% filling of the Holy Spirit? Get out of the way. You're suffering today from some joy problems. Most of that is how you think about things. How you let every little thing get down, how you look for a problem and around every corner, you know. And, you're, and, it, and it's a weakness because we're not saying, hey, God, you got this under control. Chris came down here, and I'm going to tell you what I told him when he, when he come down here. Maybe Philip and them thought it was a little, thought it harsh when I said it to him this way. But I said, look now, 
I said, you come down here. We've been praying about this circumstance. We're not going to keep praying about the same thing. Okay. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pray about, uh, 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 and he said, I, I was coming down here to praise the Lord. I'm like, good answer. Good answer. Because what happens is sometimes when we come down here and it's the same exact, uh, same exact thing. If, we have, if you've been praying about that and you pray about that thing every day, I'm not saying it's not something you, should, you shouldn't pray about, but I don't, just, I don't think that God has to be reminded every single day of that. What we have to do is, is sit in a place of trust to God. We have to walk in the fact that God, I have handed that to you, I've surrendered that to you, and I am not going to pick it back up. And whatever you got going on in your life right now that continuously is sapping you of your joy, you are allowing that to happen. And you can keep praying to God all you want to that he is going to take that away from you. He is not going to stop your hand from picking it back up sometimes. You pray about something here, you, you pick it back up and carry it with you. He's, well, okay. God wants you. He is not going to force your actions. He wants you to have the attitudes where you are allowing him to fill you up so much that he is working through you. He's tired of us messing stuff up and then want him to come and clean it up all the time. He's going to let you mess up for a while until you can finally say that you don't do it right. So if you're, if you're sitting in this place and you're going, ah, just th this joy that I have because you keep picking up, you keep allowing those things to penetrate through, through, through your defenses. To where you're not as strong as, as you need to be. You're filling yourself up with the world, uh, with uh, uh, your, your own attitudes and your own desires. <clears throat> so think about this. In um, Sunday school lesson this morning, we're talking about Jonathan, right? Okay. Um, and in the last scripture in I think it was in, uh, I think it was in chapter 23. Uh, <clears throat> what did Jonathan go up to do to David? Huh? He went up and he comforted David and encouraged him. And it said he gave him strength. Sometimes, and, and, and this, this is what I'll say to you, it is incumbent upon us as Christians to try to, to, try to encourage one another. You see somebody who's, you know, not, they're down or out or, or whatever. You don't just walk away and talk about them or something, but to, to intercede for them, to, in, to encourage them, to try to lift them up out of this place of, of darkness and deception that they may be in and, and, and help them along. It is incumbent upon us to be able uh, to do that, not to just enable people to walk around uh, defeated, all, all of the time, um, and, and you should be able to find some encouragement uh, when, when you come, especially to church. And there are lots of people and lots of hurting people that sit around, even in this building. There are people within the, the very recent uh, history, past, I'll say within the past four or five months, that have been in here and have contemplated suicide because of things that are going on. You never know what people are going through sitting right. Sometimes there's people in here, and I could name out some folks, uh, uh, that they'll go through things, Debbie Elkins, uh, and, and she, she had a whole problem with her shoulder. Wouldn't want nobody to know it. She's over it now, you know. Uh, but I'm just using you for instance because it's not about a mental thing. But there are sometimes that people go and have surgeries or they have things. And don't want you know, God and everybody to know about everything that's going on there. Not like that. I happen to be one of those people like that. I, I, really, I really love the fact that people pray, they're, they're concerned and all of that kind of stuff. But probably if you see me hobbling around here, my back isn't too good. Okay. And when you got about 800 people that are asking y'all, how you doing? You okay? You doing this? Hey, by the way, you need to do that. You need to change this. You need to do that. Sometimes when you're in those situations, you want to be left alone. You know, that's why people don't, don't say it. In the, that's, sometimes people don't want you to come to the hospital. But that's on a physical thing. But I can tell you where there are many people that don't tell us about the physical things they're going through, there is 10 times more people that are struggling with mental and emotional things that they don't tell anybody about. And if you're in here today 
and you are struggling with something and you are walking uh, it without joy, all right, you can find that joy in Jesus Christ today. And that joy is available to you despite the world we're living in today, despite the circumstances that you'll find yourselves at home, uh, at your workplace and all of that. It, it is a source of living water where that well never runs dry. All right, you just got to look to the right places. We're not, we're not going, you know, I said the other day, I know it's a depressing kind of thought. We're living in perilous times. This nation may not survive. The Bible doesn't say that the United States of America is supposed to survive. But people say, well, if this happens or that happens, it's going to destroy our nation. Buckle up. The destruction of this nation is probably going to happen within our lifetimes, depending on how old you are in here. All right. It, I, I, I doubt, it's doubtful that we can come back from where we are. And, and, but I can tell you, the only nation on the face of the planet that God sees through to the bitter end is Israel. That's the only one. Everybody else, well, Rome fell, Babylon fell, Persians fell. That's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Only one has he made a promise, you know, uh, a promise to, and only one that his time clock is absolutely set to what's taking place in the nation, nation of Israel. This nation started out great. Now, I don't like to say that because my patriotism is, is large. But I'm, but I'm looking for, I don't, I don't really, my joy's not dependent on how a, an election goes in the United States. Because I'm bound to be depressed <laughs> by that. My joy isn't, well, am I in pain? You know, this pinch nerve may never go away. Who knows? What am I going, what do you do? How do you, you keep, you keep going? Some of those problems that we deal with, they're going to be there. And if your idea today is, well, when everything gets perfect, then I'll have joy. No, I, I wouldn't go that route because you're not, you're not going to have it. Just be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I promise you, he gets you through everything. He gets you through it. And you have all kinds of things that God is wanting you to do in this in this life and he wants to use you as an instrument of his will and i can tell you this we we sing these songs and all of that but uh uh we sang some last sunday where we're talking about basically god using us in his mission field i don't want to do something and going to the sunday school lesson today i don't want to do something because of societal pressure on you to do it or some expectation of people or whatever. I want to be inside of God's will and everything that he wants me to do. And when you find that happy place to where you're hitting on all cylinders because you have filled with the Holy Spirit and you're walking in step with him, he's going to take care of all of these things that you thought were mountains you could not ever climb. All right. He is a God today. If you're facing a mountain, he'll move it. He won't even make you climb it or go around it. He said, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you could move that mountain. Say to that mountain, be you removed and cast into the sea, and it would. All right. So we, are, we should walk in victory every day. He has won the war. When he said, Jesus said on the cross, into thy hands I commend my spirit, it is finished. Everything that happened after that was the winning of the war when he, ra he rose from that grave. These battles that we're going through, he didn't promise you he was going to make you win all of them, but we can if we walk with him and we walk in his ways. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Get yourself out of the way and let's walk in joy and be a shining light because if we can walk in joy, people are going to go, wow, because there's not a lot of examples out there. Stand out. Let's pray. Father God, I praise you and I thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Father, I thank you that we can have a joy that is not something tied to this world, Father God. It's not tied to material things, Lord, money and all of that, Lord. It's tied to the spiritual things that you are doing in our lives. The emotional state that we have, Lord, can be dependent on what your Holy Spirit is doing in our lives, Lord. As we are filled with the Spirit, we can walk in righteousness. We can walk in more of a victorious standpoint, God, through the things we're going and through. And Lord, I pray for uh, the, the youth, the kids, the adults, and Lord, all in this place today. Lord, whether we're going to school, work, 
just living in our normal lives in our neighborhoods and families, Father, that we would be shining examples of joy, of happiness, of gladness. And when people recognize that difference in us, that we're living in that way, even though the world around us is just uh, deplorable and, and in, a, in a very sad state, Lord, that we can explain to people why we have that victory, why we have that gladness and joy in our life, and we can lead them to you. Use us as instruments of your will, God. Keep us safe as we leave this place today. Bring us back at the appointed time. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.